What's up guys? Hope everyone's doing well. Just finishing up a uh, hot steamy Father's Day here in Central Iowa and had the tractor out today. I was actually doing some uh, cutting some grass with the brush hog and I actually have it unloaded but I was thinking before I put the trailer away I'm gonna uh, shoot a quick video here. One of the most common questions questions that I see on forums and Facebooks and uh, Facebook and places like that is the best trailer for people to use for a compact tractor. So I've got a Kubota B2601, a uh, little 26 horse tractor, which I love by the way. It's perfect size and does everything that I need. And I uh, just kind of thought I'd give you an idea of the trailer that I'm using and my thoughts on this. So I've used, I have actually have a uh, 12 foot dump trailer here and I've got another video where I, I used to use that trailer to haul this tractor. I'll, I'll uh, tack that video on at the end here so you can take a look at that if you're interested. But um, I've also used a 20 foot tilt bed, which was really sick tr slick trailer. It wasn't mine, I just borrowed it. Um, those are, those are kind of pricey trailers. And now I've actually, I've had this one for probably six months or so. This is a, an 18 foot Doolittle. It's a, it's a 16, 16 plus two with the two foot dovetail on the end. And it's got the equipment ramps on it. And my thoughts are that an 18 foot trailer is about perfect for a little tractor. And, you know, I think you could get by with, I know you can get by with less, but I think a lot of that has to do with type of implements that you run on it. Um, when I, if I have a, my rear scraper blade on or that brush hog, I need, I need an 18 foot trailer. I need all that length. If I have, you know, if I don't have that and I just am going somewhere and using the bucket or, um, or the grapple, I can get by with a shorter trailer. But two nice things about an 18 foot trailer. One, you have enough length that you can carry a longer implement. And the other thing too, is that it gives you more flexibility so you can adjust the, you know, where your load weight is on that trailer so you can put the correct amount of tongue weight. Um, so my opinion is an 18 footer is about right. The 16 plus two, I think is about perfect. You know, you can haul vehicles on it too, which I've done before. Um, and I just think it's the perfect size. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the tractor on the trailer here. You can kind of get an idea of uh, how it fills it up. And then I'm also gonna show you the method that I use to actually strap it down. All right, so as I was saying before, you pretty well fill that trailer when you've got a brush hog or a scraper blade on the back, as you can see. And the way I run this, I actually, uh, that tail wheel actually comes out, hangs out the end of the, of the uh, trailer. And I keep my, I keep a two by eight on there just because I've got that tooth bar on there. That's a piranha tooth bar and it just chews the trailer up. So I throw that on there to, to take the chewing. So anyway, you can see it fits really well. Anything shorter than that, and I wouldn't get that on there without having to hang the bucket out over, you know, over the tongue or something that would be less than ideal. So let's take a look at how I chain this thing up. So in the back, I use a chain on my tow bar here. Let me get you up here. So if you can see up there on my, the tow bar of the tractor, I've got a shackle.
Maybe you can see better from over there. So I just, I just run a chain. Through that shackle. Take it over the top of the brush hog. I've got the uh, I've got ratcheting binders, but I've just been using this snap binder lately, and it works fine. There. Wrap that chain around. <clears throat> In the front, I've actually, as you can see here, this plate, this is quarter inch steel, and I just welded that D-ring onto that plate, and then I actually just used factory holes that are actually in the frame, uh, in the frame of the tractor, and uh, drilled a couple holes in that quarter inch plate, and those provide perfect hooks for anchoring down the front end. And I prefer to use straps. And I know a lot of people have differing opinions on straps. My opinion is that this little tractor, as it sits here, weighs, I don't know, 3,000 pounds maybe. <clears throat> Got a chain in the back. These straps are 10,000 breaking, 10,000 pounds breaking force. And I've got one on each side, so I get a pretty good pull to the front corner here. And I got a pretty good pull to the back corner. And I won't bother hooking the strap up on the other side. And I don't always do this, but if I'm going to go very far, um, sometimes I will throw a strap up over the top of the bucket just in case the DOT guys want to harass me. I know you're supposed to actually have a strap over your uh, over a load or two, so I do go ahead and throw one over there. But um, so that's how I do that. One thing I'll I might mention I've shown this before. Um, these straps. This one's kind of in a knot because my dog got a hold of it and was dragging it all over the yard. But typically. The way I do these straps, they stay in really good condition and they don't get all wadded up like this. And what I do, these are, you know, these are like 27 foot straps, I think, something like that. So what I do is I take the excess and I just basically roll it into a quick loop like this. And I get it up, you know, within, oh, probably 18 inches or so, a couple feet. And then the easiest way to do this is just basically pull a chunk of that strap through, make a loop, and pull that loop over the top of the strap. And if you do that, that locks in. And that could probably hang like that for a 1,000 miles, and it would never go anywhere. Um, I've gone long ways with straps like that and never had one you know, come loose. Now I'll, I'll take it and, you know, not going to just let it hang. I'll flip it around like that, but super uh, secure way to deal with those long straps um, in case you haven't seen anybody do that. So anyway, hopefully that's helpful. It works really well for me. Um, this is actually a, this is a 14,000 pound trailer. And obviously, you know, you don't need a 14,000 pound trailer for a little tractor like this. I got it because I got this trailer because I, it was used and I got a good deal on it and I thought, what the heck, I can, you know, I can haul skid loader with it, I can haul cars on it, I can haul a lot of stuff with it, so it's better to have too much trailer, um, you know, more than what you need and rather than have too, too little trailer. So 
anyway, hopefully you guys found that helpful. That's kind of what I, my opinions on, uh, on a tractor trailer. You know, everybody's got their own opinion. None are right and some of them stink. And uh, maybe you think mine does too, but leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And uh, hey guys, do me a favor. If you haven't, uh, I'm just starting this new channel. I've got another YouTube channel um, that I'm directing more for kind of business stuff for home improvement. Um, home improvement type work that I do. So I've decided to go ahead and do a, a personal channel just for all the stuff that I do around here for, you know, tractor work and brush hogging and grapple work and running chainsaws and, you know, working on cars and just all the things that I do around here. Um, tinkering with bows and guns and uh, archery hunts and a lot of stuff, just kind of a big variety. So if you're interested in that stuff, do me a favor and uh, hit the subscribe button, just getting this channel off the ground. And I look forward to getting some subscribers on board. So. Appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, throw it in the comment down below. I'll do my best to get back to you quickly. Take care. Have a good one.